Okay, hey guys, Jazz. I'm back with another book review, and this is one going to be amazing. Now, the book is, this is Sister Soldier's Midnight. It's a gangster's love story. Now, let me tell you about this book right here, okay? So, I'm thinking this book was, um, like, um... Uh, an extension of the guy Midnight from the book um, The Coldest Winter Ever. Yeah, because it's the same guy. But they not going in. I thought it was going to be about how he came to America because he's not from America. He's actually from Africa, from Sudan. And I thought they was going to talk about how, you know, um, the, the things that was going on in The Coldest Winter Ever. I thought they was going to elaborate on that and give us a whole view of his whole life um story about how um he came here what he did had to come here how he overcame i guess the the things that went on in his life or whatever because the other book was saying how he had been through some things you know what i'm saying but they didn't mention it in this book then i look on here and it says a love story so you know, I thought it was actually his life story, but not a love story, but it is what it is. So this guy right here, Midnight, he's actually from um, Africa. He come from Sudan and um, he's um, he's a Muslim guy. He's in a Muslim. He got a, a different culture, you know, than America do. And one day, you know, and he his, his, his father's really rich, you know, he's very rich. He has this estate in Sudan and whatever. And um, he comes to America. He came to America to... I guess. I don't know why they even came. They don't say why he came. They don't say why his father didn't should come with him, but he sent his wife, his pregnant wife and seven-year-old son to America I guess to start a new life. And he come here and whatever and it's all, I guess he don't really know too much. You know, he's seven years old. She can't speak English. And so they trying to find somewhere to live. Now, he was supposed to meet some of his friends here, but they never showed up. They never showed up for him. So they was basically on their own here and they had to figure out where they gonna live and it's this and that. So he ran into some people in this book store, book store and he was looking for some books and he was wondering he's like, would y'all know anywhere that um we could live, you know, to find some apartments or whatever, something like that. And they they pointed him to the project. So he didn't know it was the project at the time. So he just knew it was a reasonable price and he said, okay, that'll be fine. So he goes there and whatever, and he like he said, okay, we're going to take this for now for temporarily. And they take it, but he in the projects in um, Brooklyn. And he was saying to himself how, you know, he's used to a certain culture. You know, he um he he they see things differently over there in Africa and Sudan. And when they get here to America and they see the way the Americans live, and he's like, oh, my goodness, what's wrong with these people? There's not really something that he can get with. So he don't really want to be, you know, he really don't want to have nothing to do with them. You know what I'm saying? He's like, no, you know, something wrong with these people. They are not our friends and this, this, and that. And basically, he's like, he really cut his family off and himself off to the um the black Americans that surround them because he can't get with the way they live. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's saying the women are very loose and how they're very promiscuous and... He's used to women who's very modest and, you know, who's are, their women in their country are like virgins. They don't sleep around. They wait for them to meet their husbands to be. They get married and they with them. And he didn't like the way the women, you know, was coming up to him. He said, you know, these women are fast. They always um, going after women. And he, that was a big thing of, of about something that he didn't like. And he, he was talking about also the men and how they basically care about how they look and their clothes but they're not trying to better their lives anywhere else, like their communities or nothing like that. So he was very opinionated about basically Americans and um and black America. Well, you know, Americans. Period. He was just saying how you know our culture is different from theirs, and he was just you know afraid for his his mother being here because the men in this country didn't cherish women the way they do in his country. But anyway, so he's just, you know, he's a very mature little boy for seven years old because, you know, he got to take care of his mother and he got to he got to do things as that his husband, her husband would do. So he she has he has to play that role because her husband wasn't with her and she didn't speak any English. But he took very good care of his mother. And when she had her baby, which was a little girl, he, he also helped take care of his little sister. You know, he found his mother a job and he got a job and they started, you know, trying to build and save to get out the neighborhood they was in because they didn't like it, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't what they what they were used to. 
And so, you know, they started working hard and started to start saving their money so they could um, maybe purchase a house or just relocate. But in the midst of things, you know, he had um, found, a, a he seen a girl, you know, he was working in the um, fish market in, the, in Chinatown. And it was this um, girl who kept coming, walking by, looking at him, whatever. And he, he caught her eye and she caught his eye. And, and she was, um, but she was Japanese. And so, you know, he really, you know, he was like, ooh, he was curious about her. Because basically, you know, he was, he, he. He wanted a woman who was a virgin and, you know, someone that was, because he's a Muslim guy and that's what he used to. And he was saying, you know, she seems like a nice person. He, you know, he's checking her out the way she dressed, the way she carries his, carry herself. And he likes that about her. You know what I'm saying? And, and he, he, she likes him too, because every day, you know, she comes to the store and just watch him because she works about four stores down and she, she like works in a grocery store or something like that. It's her family owned business. And so they just, you know, really just peeping each other, but she doesn't speak any English. You know what I'm saying? So they really can't talk to each other. So one day, you know, she goes get her cousin and brings her cousins, and they walk by, and they goes into the fish market, and they wind up striking up a conversation with them. And the cousin let her know that, oh, yeah, my, my cousin likes you. She thinks you're very interesting, and she would like to get to know you better, but she doesn't speak English. She only speaks Japanese and uh, maybe a uh, Mandarin and a couple of other um, foreign languages, but she don't speak any English. So she, so she was interpreting, you know, translating the conversation between them two. But you know, as time went on, you know, they started really like really feeling each other and had like some kind of, um, I guess, gesture with the what she was trying to say and what he was trying to say, and they would get different people to translate and this, this, and that. But they fell in love. Yeah, they fell deep in love. And, you know, he did a lot also. He played basketball teams. There was a lot of going on. You know, he killed two people. Yeah, two black guys because he didn't like the way one of them was looking at his mother, you know, because his mother worked at this shop and she was really nice and and making clothes and things like that. And so what she did was she um, made a couple of ensembles and a lot of people was asking about, a lot of women was asking about her her clothes and things like that that she was wearing and they was wondering maybe they could, she could make them some. So what she did was she opened up her own business and making clothes and this, this and that and she got a lot of business for that and they were saving a lot of money. They was making a lot of money for it. Even one day um, these very rich, rich Sudanese had, was um, in America and they was also heard about her work and they said, well, I was wondering maybe could you make like all the my daughter's getting married and could you make possibly make her dress and the bridesmaids dresses also and she was like yes yeah. so they paid her like over ten thousand dollars to do this and that's what they needed really so they could accumulate enough money to really buy their own home so she did that and whatever and she he met a couple of them sudani women and whatever and he took his beautiful the girl the, the uh, japanese girl you know she he invited her so he, she can see his culture and how he lived and the things that, you know, was uh, important to them. And they got along pretty good. And the Japanese girl was actually an artist and she was very good at her, her, her thing. So when she was 14 at the time now, and she's about 16, a Japanese girl and they're dating, you know, going through things and whatever. And, but they're getting along pretty good, you know, and they seem like they really love each other deeply, you know, and he also, you know, he also was in the dojo where he learned how to do different kinds of martial arts and things like that. And his um, sensei was also um, Japanese. So that was a plus because sometimes he can translate what they were trying to say to each other. But, you know, he was big on not fornicating or, or sleeping with anyone unless that was his wife. So he was a virgin and so, so was she. And so, you know, but she, she was like kind of fast, you know, she wanted to, him to, you know, to pursue her that way, but he was saying how it's not his culture to do that, you know, and um, he can't be pursuing her that way unless he was going to make her, you know, I guess legit like an honest woman by marrying her first. And so she understood that. And so sooner, so they, what they did was they, they wound up getting married and this, this and that. And then they had their first night together and that was so beautiful and everything. But her family was like skeptical about him. He, you know, she, they didn't really welcome him with open arms the way his mother opened her, you know, opened her arms for her. So he kind of felt that, but he was saying how it would grow, it, it would grow on them, you know, because they was planning on having children and everything, you know. 
And they was also, it was big on, he was saying, you know, how people were frowning because they were so young and getting, and, and so, and getting married. You know, she was like, but the American people, what they do is they wind up having sex at a young age, getting pregnant or aborting their children and never really um, finding a husband. And just be giving their body to a whole lot of men. And they think that's okay. And he didn't see it that way. You know, he was very judgmental on American people. He didn't really like their ways or anything like that. And he was just saying how we were just um, unintelligent and kind of stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was big. And they didn't want anything to do with us. And the women that they did pursue that was American, they said they, they would never think about being with them. They were, just, they were just basically like using them for certain things. Yeah, I'm not going to go into that. But, um, yeah, but they wound up um, getting married to him and this Japanese woman. But one day, you know, and she had this um, art show and she did all her art um, about him and his family. It was called um, Africa, something like that, the love of Africa. Um, don't quote me on that, but it was something like that. And he basically painted him, his her mother, her, his little sister, even the women who was in the Sudanese um, wedding. And whatever, and it was a beautiful art project. But after that, he was looking for her, and he couldn't find her. You know, he was searching. He went all by her, her family houses, went by the job, and he couldn't find her. And then one day, he ran into one of his cousins, one of her cousins, and she was like, "I'm looking for Akimi. Did you see her, her name was Akimi?" And um, she was the, and they was like, "Oh yeah, Akimi went back to um, the Japan. Her father came and got her and took her back to Japan." So I was saying to myself, like, "Wow." He must not agree with their marriage because when they was in the, in the art gallery, the the um the lady who was the instructor was asking like, well, who are you? And he was like, oh, I'm Akimi's husband. And, you know, she probably called the dad and was like, you know, Akimi got married, you know, and, and next thing you know, the father came and got her. And that's the way the book ended. I mean, it was okay, but like I said, I thought it was going to be about something different. Like the, the story that I read about him and the coldest wind forever was, totally different and I was trying to figure out how did this all play out because it was saying in the coldest winter ever that he was arrested as a young boy and was um, sent to jail because his do his little sister was being hurt by a man on in the projects they were at and he served some time in jail and when he got out his mom had passed away and it's, I'm telling you I just couldn't understand where these where it all be because he was but he was moving out of the projects he had they have saved up money and they found the house and they was about to move into this house and whatever but the other stories were saying how he was still in the projects and how he got arrested in the projects and went away for for many many years and while he was gone for many many years his dad his mom fell on hard times and was kind of struggling and she wound up passing away while he was in prison and his sister went in foster care and he didn't know where his sister was. I mean, I was just trying to figure out how do these two stories come together when it, it when it time it's like the timeline is kind of, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't add up. I was just trying to figure out like, well, how did, when did he go to jail and when did his mom pass and when did he meet the guy, the, um, went to the girl, went to father who put him back on so he can make money. But the the story that they gave in this book right here does not add up to the story that I read about him in The Coldest Winter Ever. Look, anyone who read the book The Coldest Winter Ever would know that this book right here, um, Midnight, um, a gangster, love, he wasn't a gangster in this book. He was a working guy and he was um, a small business owner. With him and his mom ran, helped run ran, ran her business. So I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, like trying to figure out what's going on because it doesn't all, it doesn't add up. That's all I'm just saying. It, it just doesn't add up, but it was an okay read. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I look, it's okay. I wouldn't read it again. And you know, I was just trying to figure out the whole time that I was reading it. I was just trying to figure out what. Okay, guys, well, that's it to my book. That's what I'm saying, but it's an all right book. I mean, I enjoyed the love story and everything. It was kind of erotic and everything, but um, yeah, but he has a lot of crazy views about Americans and the and American um, women and how we so loose. So I was just saying to myself, maybe hmm, some mothers could read this book maybe so to keep their, their daughters um, 
a little more pure, you know what I'm saying? Because I guess that's what men want now. They were just saying how you're not um, a high quality woman. The women, uh, the American women aren't because they're so promiscuous and they have so many, um, so many intimate partners that no man don't want, wouldn't take them seriously. Also, that was, that was deep in that book. If anybody want to read exactly like their thoughts on that, on, you know, and how they look and how basically when people come to this country and how they, how they see us. You know what I'm saying? And so um, that's why they don't really want to have any dealings with us or this, this, and that. And and they even made a, a school for their um, girls to go to so they wouldn't be, um, so they wouldn't be, you know, drawn into our lifestyle, you know what I'm saying, to keep them separate because they, they felt as though the way we live is, is not good. All right, so, well, that's my book review. And here it is. It's the... Um, you know, it's just the soldiers, midnight, a love story. Yeah, real deep. All right, guys. Thank you.